focusing on topics and issues that reach our communities with the love and the power of Jesus Christ. And thank you for joining us here at Outreach Connection. I'm Gary Schluckaber, your host. And um, Outreach Connection is getting the word of the Lord Jesus Christ out and to anybody who will hear, anybody who is hungry. And it begins at home. I always like that phrase. It begins at home, but it's very important that we teach our children about the word of God. And I want to read to you out of Deuteronomy, opening, opening verses here on this program, out of Deuteronomy chapter 6. If you have your Bible, you might want to go there and highlight this. I've got mine over the years all marked up and because it's a very powerful piece of instruction for us. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 9. Hear, O Israel, the Lord... Our God, the Lord, is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall listen to this. Because this is what our program is about today. You shall teach them diligently to your children. And shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. <clears throat> you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as <clears throat> frontlets between your eyes. In other words, don't forget the Word of God. Always have it available. Have it in front of you. The last verse we read, you shall write them on the doorpost of your house, and on your gates. So it begins the Word of God, teaching the Word of God, not only just for us as individ individuals, but for our children too. And I have with me today the administrator of the Christian, Christian school here, Brother Paul Lambs. Thank you for, so much for being around the table here. Thank Brother you. Paul, and Thank not you. only the administrator of the uh, Christian school here in Quincy, but you also pastor, um, what, New Beginnings? Correct. Uh, out on 22nd and Locust Church. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> You've been there, what did you say, three years? It'll be three years in yeah, July. For, as, as pastoring. So you are wearing several hats, <laughs> if you will, <laughs> you know, with that. Well, thank you for joining us. and going to tell us all about the Christian uh, public, or there, I said it, the Christian <laughs> school. I don't know why I keep saying that, but the Christian, Quincy Christian School. Yeah. And uh, that's, uh, wh where's that located at? That's on the corner of 10th and Cedar. Okay. So here in town. So. Yeah. And, and um, 10th and Cedar is also, there's a big church there, uh, building. Right. Know, to, uh, well, right. Uh, Madison. Um, or Grandview. Grandview. Grandview Church. Grandview Church, yeah. Yep. You know, housed in that. And many people will probably recognize the church as being um, the former St. John's uh, Catholic Church many, many years ago mm -hmm. in school. But uh, here, the it's, it's nice that the Christian school has found a place to house for um, the students and everything. Well, tell us, yeah. tell us yeah. a little bit about the school. And, and uh, uh, now you've been here just for... Well, a short time right now. You're, <laughs> yep. you're brand new getting your feet wet here. I am. Um, yes, yeah, started in January with this position. Uh, we've been affiliated with the school uh, since moving back to the Quincy area, but uh, having a position there since the beginning of January. Mm -hmm. And you have children so. yourself. Yeah, we have four boys, so my wife is a very busy, godly woman. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. Where, yeah. where would we be without... Uh, I liked what you said before we went on air. I have a very supportive wife, you know, <laughs> to be true. able to do, to to be the administrator of a school and the and the pastor of church also. Yeah, is uh, just pastoring alone is is a big job, <laughs> if you will, or calling and however I want to tell it. Well, tell us a little bit about your school. How many students that are do you have at the school and? 
Well, we have 70 students enrolled at the school right now. Uh, we are a K through 12 school. Mm -hmm. um, we offer a variety of subjects. So mm -hmm. one subject that is mandatory through all classes is the Bible. And with our elementary, we have Bible class that is led by our teachers. Mm -hmm. But when you get into the secondary department, which is consists of the sixth grade through 12th grade, mm -hmm. uh, we have a Bible professor who is also the dean of students. Oh, okay. And so we have every day they are being equipped with Bible knowledge mm -hmm. and Bible ways to live it out and serve God. Mm -hmm. Then on Wednesdays, we also have special chapel time for the elementary in the afternoon and the secondary department in the morning. Okay, okay. So, the uh, of course, the regular uh, arts or the uh, classes are given reading, writing, math, you <laughs> yes. know, arithmetic. Yes. But um, uh, so, uh, of course, the, the Christian aspect of it mm -hmm. is, you know, to school the children yeah. in what the Word of God says, you know, from the time that not only at home, but it, here they can ha have that Christian education. Right, right. And we just, we have a great staff that really invests God into the lives of the students. And God has really been blessing the students and blessing the school as a result. Mm -hmm. We uh, have consistently over the past, <clears throat> well, quite a few years now, been testing <clears throat> two grade levels above national norm. And a lot of that I attribute to not only the level of academics we oh, have, okay. but to the <clears throat> investing that God is in everything. Okay. And we show that through all areas of academics. Yeah. And you've been in the classroom over the years. Right. I, I've had an opportunity to substitute there on a, reg, on a fairly regular basis. Yeah. And um, just really have grown to love the atmosphere, love the people, families. Yeah. So. <clears throat> Well, tell us what your day is like. How does how does an administrator of a of a Christian school what's their day like? How, did, how, did, how does your day begin? Well, uh, normally I begin by trying to be downstairs to meet students, meet parents, and just welcome them into the building. Um, after that time, I go upstairs and I try to block out a 10, 15 minute time period where I can just totally go to God for mm -hmm. the students and families for their day, for their week and just spend time pouring over them in prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, I will <clears throat> go to my emails because I believe in correspondence back and forth mm -hmm. and see if there's any things that I need to address at the time or questions to answer. Mm -hmm. And then I just come back mm -hmm. into the office and continue to greet staff and just see if there's anything that I can help them out with in yeah. preparing for the day. <clears throat> Well, I'm sure there's plenty to do. <laughs> I'm sure there's a, a, a lot knocking on your door, a lot on your plate, and, yeah. and being in a uh, position mm -hmm. like that, an administrator at the school. Now, your, your time schedule for the school, what's your, do you run um, con coordinate with the um, public schools, or how does this work? We do try to coordinate mm -hmm. with the public schools and their days off. Um, I know this year, because of scheduling, our Easter break is a little different than this public mm -hmm. schools program. Mm -hmm. And then also for snow <clears throat> days, we, we need to watch. Uh, we have quite a few staff and students as well who live in the rural community. And so we need to watch their atmosphere, their mm -hmm. roads for winter weather. Mm -hmm. um, and we kind of compensate by starting a little mm -hmm. bit earlier. I think where you start one week earlier than the public school system, oh, do you? Okay. just to compensate, because we don't want to lose that time in the classroom. Mm -hmm. So of course, <clears throat> because of inclement weather, when the public schools are closed down, you're closed down. Yes. <clears throat> By yeah. and large, to follow yeah. <clears throat> with their plan, too. Um, now, with your K through 12, do you have some um, athletic teams? Oh, we've had a <clears throat> boys and girls basketball team this past year. We are looking to maintain that, but yet also <clears throat> we're considering the possibility of opening up to a volleyball schedule for this coming year. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're excited about that and in prayer about that. Yeah, yeah. And then you've got an event coming up, too. <clears throat> yes, we have our big fundraiser. Uh, we have a pancake and sausage breakfast that includes mm -hmm. the silent auction. Uh, we have donated materials from around the, the city in, mm -hmm. of Quincy that people can bid on for an auction. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's a great food. It's a great time of fellowship to come together and mm -hmm. 
just sit down and talk and see how we can continue moving forward with God together. Yeah. <clears throat> April 23rd, pancake and sausage, <clears throat> 7 a.m. till 11 a.m., and then the um, <clears throat> silent auction. Mm -hmm. That's with a uh, free will donation. Yeah. For all that. Yeah. Okay. Well, that <clears throat> better mark it on your calendars <laughs> out there. You know, get it on your calendar so that you can uh, take mama out to breakfast. You know? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you there know? you go. Yeah, with that. <clears throat> um, the uh, devotion time then that, that, that you spend or, or Bible time with that you spend with the kids, it's how much time are we are, are you looking at per day on on a daily basis with with uh, being the Christian school and and that activity and then of course now <clears throat> let me say this while I'm saying that <clears throat> I'm sure you have students from all different denominations mm -hmm. right right we are a non-denominational or interdenominational school um, the time spent on the <clears throat> Bible curriculum is an entire class period. So for okay. secondary, you okay. have about 50 minutes, and yeah. then in the elementary, it's I believe it ranges from around that 25 to 30 minute mark. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Well, how did you get into teaching? What What's your <laughs> Give us a little bit on your background. Uh, was you raised in a Christian home, or I was raised in a Christian home. I was raised by my mother and greatly influenced by her parents, my grandparents. Mm -hmm. Very godly, loving environment. And I actually have wanted to be a preacher since I was just a little boy, probably okay. around the age of five or six. Really? Okay. Um, just really nurtured in that environment. Went to a good, supportive church as well. Mm -hmm. And then just uh, through high school, I uh, tried to rebel a little bit, but, you know, God... God brought situations into my life to call me back. Yeah, those teenage and, years are that so often happens. Yeah, yeah. 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 But he, <clears throat> he blessed me with uh, providing a wonderful woman into my life, my, my wife, mm -hmm. to come along. And we started dating, and um, I knew she was the one. I could not let her go. So uh, <laughs> we, we got married. She was 19. I was 21. And we were married, went on the honeymoon for a week. Took a week to pack and then moved down to Hannibal, Missouri for school. And you went to school. So, okay. Yeah. And then started ministry. Uh, I was in youth ministry uh, for the majority of the time. Okay. And then in 2009, I decided to go into senior ministry. And that led us back up to northern Illinois, closer mm -hmm. to family. And then in 2013, uh, was asked to come back down to Quincy and be the pastor at New Beginnings Church. Mm-hmm. Quincy's a good town, isn't it? We have really enjoyed it. We like yeah, it. Yeah, I, I, Quincy is, um, well, I've, I've raised my kids here and <clears throat> over the years, too, with being in and out, too, uh, with ministry work and everything. But uh, Quincy's an excellent town, an excellent school system. And, yeah. and then I'm so thankful we've got the, the Christian school that yeah. uh, we have for a choice right. you know, that, that people have. Um, and then um, on the on the uh, event coming up on the breakfast and the silent auction, and is this the first year you're doing that, or is that? This is going to be our nineteenth nineteenth pancake and sausage breakfast. <clears throat> so, how long has the school been in existence? Now I know it hasn't always been there. Right, it was at a, <clears throat> another location for mm -hmm. a while, but uh, I believe the first classes started in 1997. Oh, okay, okay. So, so uh, it's well, well, as we know, too, as we talk about it, it um, certified as far as in our area. Correct. You know, and, Correct. and reputation and everything. Then um, how, do you, how do you mix the blend of being a pastor then and find the time to pastor a church and to administrate a school? How many, because... How many hours are you at the school, for example? Let me go there. Uh, normally, I will start my day around the 7.30 mark, and uh, I try to leave. I promised my wife that I would try to leave around the 4 o'clock mark, okay, but sometimes sure. situations happen. Uh, sure. They're a little later. But, uh, so I try to do that uh, during those time periods, come home, spend a little time with my boys and with my wife. And then I began either studying for my sermon on Sunday morning or I'm doing a one-year master's program through Hannibal LaGrange College. So I have to do the homework during that time as well. You're, so you're, you I, are a busy <laughs> man, yeah. Well, continued well, education for the educators is, is something that goes hand in hand. Uh, very true, very true. <clears throat> yeah, it's 
especially in in pastoring and and everything. Then, then can I can I just say then, what what's your church times? What uh, uh, for new beginnings? What what time are your church services there? We have our children's <clears throat> service in the on Wednesday evenings from mm -hmm. six from wow six. 30 to 8.30 or 6 o'clock to 8. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I believe it's 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock. And okay. then our morning service Sunday <laughs> school is at 9.30 with the morning service at 10.30. Okay, okay. So, and so, yeah. and then, but let me tell you, I tell you, our audience out there, it takes a lot of time for preparation <laughs> just for all of that. Yeah. You know, the pastors are preparing for to shepherd the, the sheep when they come in on, on Sunday morning. And right. that's why it certainly needs, you, you, that pastor needs a good wife. Yes, very much, very For much. She, she really supports all of this. <clears throat> she helps keep me in check and keep me in line. Um, we both look at these as opportunities to minister to people. And so with that, we just, we keep moving forward, knowing that God will sustain yeah. us. And it just, uh, the other hand is the school and the church are both very supportive of both areas mm -hmm. and really are understanding and lenient. If I need to go and do something with a congregation member, they, they understand that at the school. Oh, yes. And then at the church, they understand if I have a school sure. function, mm -hmm. they work hand in hand. And it is truly amazing. That's good. That's good. Now back to the school on <clears throat> curriculum. Do you have... Um, um, any um, foreign languages that you share or teach? We do have uh, Spanish available to our mm -hmm. secondary students there at the school. Uh, one of, as well <clears throat> as one of the Bible classes is a uh, Greek class as well. So we have both of those languages offered at the school right now. Okay. And then, um, I don't know if we've talked about this, but you are set up with as far as the school buses. Uh, the public school buses for transporting students. Right, right. We do have that option available, and we do have a handful of students that are able to use that mm -hmm. mode of transportation. Yeah, yeah. So, because certainly that's always needed. And then you have a web page that I would recommend uh, for those of you all who are listening, maybe interested and uh, in checking out the Christian school, www.quincychristianschool.org. And if you would go on there, you would be able to see um, uh, different information <clears throat> about the school and everything. Uh, just just pull that up. And, or can I just say, if somebody wants to come and check out, visit, you know, yes. to come by the school. Yes, I, lo I love to talk. So definitely come by and uh, sit down with me. Yeah, yeah. So. And uh, um, so that they can see firsthand. Yeah. Because it's a beautiful building. It really is. It, you know, it's, we are truly blessed. Yeah, yeah, with that um, school building. <clears throat> and uh, so keeping yourself busy with all that you've got <laughs> on your page <laughs> and everything. Now, so I, I'm assuming when during the school year, when school is out in the summertime, that's when you take your your time too for with vacation but I do know that administrators work over and above that <laughs> even when school isn't in session right true very true yeah yeah so uh, and of course like you said your family yeah is very important That's right right I uh, the best <clears throat> advice I got in going into marriage counseling was that the family is the first ministry and so I really try to take a night and the following day to just Focus on family, invest in them, and let them know that dad is still here. Yeah, right. So. <clears throat> well, it's just like the opening Bible verse that I read out of Deuteronomy chapter 6. The importance, <clears throat> you shall teach the word of God diligently to your mm -hmm. children. And I think I said in my opening here, too, it, it begins at home. Right. You know, we, we can, okay, let's send the kids off <clears throat> to be to Sunday school or something to learn about God or send... Well, we'll send the kids to the Christian school, but yet God's never talked about at home. It begins at home. Right, right. We are there to help support that. <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah. And then, uh, now you, I, I'm assuming you have a regular, now I'm going to call it, you may call it something different, but a, a PTA? Okay, <laughs> maybe, maybe it's called something different, I don't know, but parent-teachers, 
um, association? Yes, <clears throat> yes. We have a wonderful group of uh, ladies that are parents who are in charge of that, and they really help connect the teachers and the parents and just really are there to encourage and support the staff and find out ways that we can better connect it with the families as well. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure, I guess, they're responsible for the breakfast? Uh, they are going to have a huge part, part in hosting this breakfast for yeah, us, yes. To, to have a part in all of that. Now, on the sports team, um, who do you compete against? Uh, we basically compete about uh, against area schools that are uh, about the same size. Uh, we play a team from Keokuk and <clears throat> a team from... Um, uh, we've played Quincy Christian or Quincy Homeschool mm -hmm. group in mm -hmm. the past. Uh, Burlington has a team that we've played against. Mm -hmm. And just really uh, anyone of about the same size and same skill, we, we are open to playing against. Yeah. Is there a gymnasium there? Do you have a gym? Yes, we do have <clears throat> a gym right on campus. Okay, so all of that is available yeah. um, to you also with that. So, well, I'll tell you. Um, Christian education in this day and age I think is so as people are looking maybe for an alternative you know and that the this and I guess your tuition fee and everything is on your web page or uh, we ask that you call so we can discuss tuition mm -hmm. prices with everyone we do try to meet people's needs as best we can so we do offer a uh, few uh, discounts throughout okay. the year, including uh, reference families. Okay. Um, okay. So, yeah. Uh, multiple children in the family? Or? Yes, yes. With each additional child, there is a reduced price per child after the first. Okay. Okay. So, so there's um, <clears throat> the, uh, uh, plenty of information that, that if you want to get. Uh, once again, going on the web page there uh, for them. And uh, now, <clears throat> you've been in Quincy for three years, mm -hmm. and you've been you've taught there in a the classroom some. And um, uh, so, is it? Have you ever been an administrator before? I mean, I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Have you ever been an administrator before, or, or uh, were you knew what? that you knew what you were walking into? Uh, I've never held the position before, but while we were up in northern Illinois, the private school where my wife and I both attended it mirrors Quincy Christian, almost identical. And so I had the opportunity to be on the school board up there while our son was enrolled and just uh, got to see behind the scenes uh, what all sure. went on. and. What I didn't realize God doing the past 13 years, I thought it was just me supplementing my income. Um, God was had me in school systems as substitute teacher or on a school board and just really preparing me for all aspects, yeah. not only administrative level, but to see also what the teachers truly go through. And so to be uh, very empathetic towards that. Right. <clears throat> I think... Um there's nothing like classroom experience. Mm, very true. Very <laughs> you true. know, before uh, the administrator goes, so that you understand and have a heart for the teacher. If the teacher comes, I'm just throwing this out. Your teacher comes to you, I got this child, I got this problem. You already been there, done that. Mm, yes. And I know every situation is different, though. Right. Right. It, you get to see it from the teacher's aspect, yeah. but also being in ministry and really working with families, you get to see that maybe there's something else yeah. that the child needs or is expressing at that moment. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I'll tell you, Christian education is so, so important. Mm. And uh, <clears throat> I'm just, I'm saying that for our audience out there, how important it is <clears throat> that it's just like the word said here out of Deuteronomy chapter 6, talk about the word of God, talk about God all the time. And one of the things that I have found in over the years of pastoring, uh, even people who come to church every Sunday with their families really don't talk about God at home. And this where is where it needs to start so that we're so comfortable with talking about Jesus Christ. He's, he's, a, he's our life. He's a part of our life. It's not just being ministers or an administrator of a Christian uh, school that we feel that way. 
even, even before I was in the ministry, the Word of God was so important uh, to, my, to my life and to my family's life that I wanted to do everything that I could to teach my children about God. Right. Just like the school is doing everything they can to, to teach the children about God Almighty, hmm. Jesus Christ our Savior. It's a Christian school and about the Holy Spirit, Amen. you know, to lead and guide us. <clears throat> and, uh, and once again, Deuteronomy 6 here tells us um, very largely, very strongly, um, huge, if, if I can put it that way too, to really stress how important it is to have the Word of God in our life and to use it. And maybe you're out there and maybe you've slipped away from the Lord. Maybe you went to a Christian school in your younger years. And maybe for some reason you've rebelled or maybe church hurt or something happened or you just, you just kind of gave up on serving the Lord. I want to encourage you to come back to, to the Lord because our time is short. And John talks about telling um, that Jesus is, John chapter 14, verse 6, He is the truth. He is the, he is the way. And He's the way to the Father in heaven. There's no other way. And if you have never given your heart, and I want to encourage you just to go back to the old paths, the foundation of your, of your life, and remember what you have fallen from is what the Word of God says, too. And you may say, well, Gary, I don't know how to do that. I don't pray anymore. <clears throat> I've said this before, and I'll say it again on the program. You talk to God just like Brother Lamb and I have been sitting here talking. Mm -hmm. You talk to God just like I'm talking to you right now. And you say, dear Lord, I am a sinner, and I confess my sin, and I need you back in my life, or if you haven't had him in your life before, he's there for you. He's waiting with open arms to come and take you in. And he'll, he'll show you, he'll give you his love, and uh, that you won't love the things of the flesh or the things that you used to. Get yourself a Bible if you don't have one, and um, begin reading in the book of John, the Gospel of John. Go in the contents of the front, and you'll find that. Pray to God. Talk to God. If you don't have a church home or if you did have one, get back. Get back and because you need that fellowship and you need that discipleship training. I need training all the time, too. That's mm -hmm. why school is so, so good. God bless you for joining us here at Outreach Connection. Brother Lamb, mm -hmm. thank you so much for being around the table with me here. I'm Gary Schluckerbeer, your host, and thank you for just... Joining in today, we God bless you greatly. Contact us at Outreach Connection, WTJR 222 North 6th Street, Quincy, Illinois 62301.